Shannon, I, I know you tweeted about how frustrated you were last night about this. How much do you trust Chris Paul going forward? Well, Skip, it, it's like his play is getting worse as the games go along. Um, we look at what, how well he played in games one and two. And if you look at the series, Skip, in series, the Lakers, he played six games, he had nine turnovers. Against the Nuggets, he had five turnovers in four games. Against the Clippers, he had eight turnovers. Uh, against the Bucks, now he has 17 turnovers in four games. So you can see the turnovers are starting to arise. Now, a lot of that has to do with Drew Holiday. Holiday ain't waiting till half court to pick his butt up. He's picking him up. He's making him fight to get the ball inbounds. And he's picking him up. He's guarding him 94 feet. And maybe that's wearing him down. Maybe you need to let Book bring the ball up. Maybe you need to let Crowder or you let uh, uh, Bridges, mm -hmm. someone else other than CP3, so he's not getting hounded all night long. But whatever the Bucks are doing, it's working. Because Chris Paul has not looked like himself since game two. Game three, and it's gotten worse. Game three, he was bad. Game four, he was even worse. So in order for them to win, Skip, he's going to have to play better. I hate that he played so bad last night and it wasted a virtuoso by Devin Booker because Devin Booker was sensational, Skip. Mm -hmm. At 18 points in the third quarter on 7-7 seven seven shooting. It seemed like every time he rolled, I was like, that's good. Count that one, bro. And he was sensational. And as great as he was, Chris Paul was equally as bad. So for me, Skip, I still believe in him. But this, 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 uh, uh, the point guard was just, oh my God, last night. Because every time, every time he got the ball, I was like, oh my God, what is he going to do now? It's like he couldn't stay on his feet. He couldn't hold on to the ball. It was almost like Skip. You remember the first, the series against the Lakers? He couldn't hold on to the ball. He was slipping all over the place. Yeah. And I'm like, what's going on, Chris? But he's going to have to fix that. The Bucks were right for the taking. I still believe the Suns are going to win this series because of the very reasons that we've been discussing. They play dumb basketball. They refuse to go inside on a consistent basis, and they jack up threes. Now, Monty said they've outworked us the last two games. I'm going to see if what he's saying is resonating in that locker room. Because right now, I can only count on two guys, really two guys. I can count on Crowder, and I can count on Book. Because Aiton got in foul trouble. I need more from you, Aiton. I need more than six points. You're doing what you're supposed to do. You had a, a couple of lapses on the off defensive end. You let uh, Coddington get in and get a rebound. You let Brooke Lopez go over your back and get a tip in on a missed free throw. I can live with that eight. You, but you gave me 17. You're averaging 16, 17 rebounds a game. But I need more on the offensive end. And Chris Paul, bruh, you don't, there ain't no guarantees you're going to get back. I know you got a young team and Book is up and coming and Aiton. But ain't no guarantees, bro. Mm -mm. You better seize this moment. Nope. So you've been saying all show Phoenix played dumb basketball last night, but you've also made the case that Milwaukee in stretches plays dumb basketball. So yes. this whole series has degenerated to me. It's become wildly exciting for all the wrong <laughs> reasons, but it's almost like we've got dumb and dumber going on here, right? Yes. Because yes. they try to out-dumb each other. Correct. I, I, Shannon. What tore me apart at the end of the game last night was that same guy I was watching, who I think is named Chris Paul. I think that's Chris Paul. That same guy scored 27 points down the stretch against my Clippers in game six yes. at Staples to close them out. He scored mm -hmm. 27 in the last two minutes of the third quarter and the fourth quarter. So in just that short of time, that guy scored 27 closeout points. It was the greatest game of his career, regular season, postseason, whatever. Greatest game of his career. And he bookended it last night, speaking of book, with the worst game of his career. And it was yes. so bad that, to your point, I, I got it against the Lakers because, remember, he banged up his shoulder. Right. And Monty didn't even want him to go. And he kept saying, no, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. And he'd get out there, and he just looked overmatched because he couldn't hang on to the basketball with his yes. right hand because his right shoulder was so banged up. And if you look at his scoring against the Lakers in those six games, seven points, six points, seven, 18, nine, and eight. So he never really, except for the 18, ever really got it going. But it seemed like he bounced back from his shoulder because against Denver, 
he started to cook a little bit. He had a 21, 17, 27, and then remember the closeout against Denver. 37. They swept 37 points from Chris Paul at age 36, ending his 16th season. And then he got stronger and stronger against the, the Clippers. Remember, he missed the first two games with COVID, so what a roller coaster ride it's been for him. But he goes 15, 18, 22, and then boom, 41. How do we go from that into a, an opening salvo against Milwaukee of 32 in game one? Yes. To your point, here are his scores by game after the 32. 23, 19, 10. Huh? What happened to Chris Paul? I don't know. Is he being haunted by the slightly torn ligament in his wrist? I think it's in his shooting wrist. That's what he said after game six against the Clippers. To your point, he's got his left wrist wrapped. So I right. don't know what's going on. But it's hard for me to give him an injury pass when I saw with my own two eyes that he scored 41 against the Clippers in a closeout and 32 in game one of these finals. Right. Okay. So, Shannon, I hate to bring up old news, but <laughs> I got to remind everyone, if you look at Chris Paul's playoff legacy, it has as many potholes in it as Giannis's playoff legacy does. Yeah. He just does because they blew a 3-1 to one lead when he was in Houston, and twice he's blown 2-0 leads. And then once, the, the other time he got to the conference finals, obviously, they were up 3-2 to two and he pulled his hamstring. Okay, and they blew the two games to Golden State and didn't get to go to the NBA Finals. So we were all ecstatic for Chris that he finally broke through and got to an NBA Finals, and then that happened. And right. it's been happening over the last three games. And last night, it, it, it looked like he couldn't hang on to the basketball. And, and again, I, I'm with you. Holiday gets high, high marks for mm -hmm. the, the pressure that he exerts on him. And maybe it wore Chris down a little bit, but this is this is Chris Paul we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, this is NBA final. Oh, no, nobody want to hear about you you wearing down. Uh. No, nah, bro, you got you got to skip. And Milwaukee did everything they could to hand them the game. They tried to give you the game on a silver platter they by did. jacking up all of these threes. They did. Giannis was not nearly as aggressive as he was in games three. No. Nope. In games two and three, mm -mm. as it, and last night, I don't know what Giannis was doing, shooting threes. He know he's not a good three-point shooter. He's shooting like 20% from the three, and he's taking threes. And when he get into the lane, he's shooting 65 70%. So the game was right there for the taking. Chris, bruh, you are going to have to play better. Because I know you, you know, if you think the Milwaukee Bucks, because you've given them life. They want, they want life support. Yeah. You breathe life back into them. You've done this single-handedly. Breathe life back into the Milwaukee Bucks. I still believe the Suns are going to win for the simple fact I know what the Bucks are going to do. They're going to come out and they're going to keep jacking up threes because they want to convince the world we can win games like we want to win games, not like how we you want us to win games, which is go inside because nobody can stop Giannis. Nobody can stop Lopez if he gets down on the block nope. because Giannis is being occupied by Aiton but you're going to shoot the threes. So I still believe the Suns are going to win, but not if Chris, Paul's conti Chris Paul continues to play like this. They're not going to win. So the CP3 roller coaster continues to roll. It goes way up here, and then it goes way down here, and yes. way back up here, and we keep talking about if he pulls this off in the finals, he's going to be ranked in the top five of all-time point guards. No. And, and yet, if he stays on this path, it's going to be a disaster. And, yes. and people are going to lose a lot of respect for him nearing the end of his career. Yes. And, Shannon, there are some nights I watch him, and he never was much of a leaper, but now on the three-point shots, he has to, like, struggle to get up there to, to release it. Right. And when he gets it in rhythm, when he finds a slot to release it, he, he, his vertical's like four inches off the ground, but <laughs> when, when he gets a slot going and he gets his flow going, he can still shoot it. Like right. crazy, he can shoot it. And if he gets to those mid-range places, whew, he can shoot it. But last Skip. night, he was getting open shots. He just couldn't make them. And, and he made one in the middle of the fourth quarter, and it bounced all around the rim and fell in. It was a little bit lucky. And I don't think it gave him much new newfound confidence. Skip, if they were playing every other day, I could say, Skip, you know, he is 36. Holiday is hounding 94 feet.
I can say, Skip, he might be wearing down. But, Skip, there are 48 hours between these games. Yeah. There is no reason that Chris Paul can't fully recover and play better than what he's playing currently. He's been awful the last two games. There's no way around it. We're, this is not to take away anything that he's already accomplished. Yeah. See, sometimes, Skip, when you say a person that isn't playing good, but he's 11-time All-Star. He's been an All-NBA. We're not trying to take that away from him. No. But what does that have to do with the way he's playing currently? He's still 11-time All-Star. He's still a nine-time All-NBA defensive player. He still was Rookie of the Year. All of that is still true. Also true, if he's played bad the last two games, the last game he was god-awful. That is true. That's factual. That's not to diminish what he's already done. No. Mm -hmm. We're talking about currently. And by the way, it's not really 48 hours. It's 72 hours between, okay. you know, Sunday to Wednesday and Wednesday yes. to Saturday. Thank you. My bad. Who's Ooh. my math teacher? So you're getting three days. So there's a, it's not like it was skipping the first couple of rounds where you go in every other day. No. So now you're getting 72 hours. After the first two games, you get 72 hours. So now they don't play again until Saturday. And then after Saturday, they don't play again until Tuesday. No. Nah, bro. Bro, you got to come on with this. This is the moment. What do you always say? They all, you always hear athletes say, these are the moments that you dream of. Yeah. These are the moments that you waited your entire life to be a part of. Okay, you're a part of it. Mm. What you got for me? Well, he owes his team a game from last night because yeah. he gave that one away. He did. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He gagged that one off. Oh, and like you guys said, a long couple days, right, for him to keep thinking about that, that one and wanting more. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.